gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number 203. So first things first, if my hair looks a little bit more gray or like a little weirder than normal, it's because I have a crap ton of baby powder in it. I was filming a video talking about like hair tips and tricks to look better and, and there is an incredible trick. If you guys are, are suffering from like super oily hair or you haven't showered, you gotta go in the morning and you wanna have cleaner looking hair, you just sprinkle a little talc powder, baby powder in your hair, give it a little bit of the business and your hair looks cleaner. Now, I dumped literally probably half a can or jar of baby powder through the filming of this video along with the thumbnail that I was kinda just like holding it and so anyway, uh, that's why my hair looks gray, if you can even tell. Today, I wanna talk about the idea of perfection as it relates to business, because oftentimes, you've heard, heard it say, probably from people much smarter than me, perfection is the enemy of progress. Oh my God, that is like mind-blowing stuff. But we're gonna unpack that a little bit today, and I'm gonna tell you why, indeed, perfection and trying to strive for, per whoa, Stry trying to strive for perfection is great and all that, but you gotta get out of the gate. So today I wanna unpack this whole like idea of perfection and don't let perfection stand in the way of you getting started and progressing and, and making mistakes because like we said in last vlog, you're gonna screw things up. Real quick, quick little update on Tish Hanley. We got a lot of, lot of stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> all of it good but there are some struggles that Tish Hanley is having. Um, we, ever since we started like stop discounting and working on that whole thing, we have not been gaining as many subscribers on a daily basis as, as we were. Um, we also have not fixed the churn issue that is an issue that every single subscription business faces, which is how many people are like canceling. And so we have not been growing. See, because T. Shanley, from the moment we started, we have been on this very strong like growth trajectory. Last year, end of the year, it sort of started to like flatten out a little bit and actually go down. We lost a bunch of subscribers fourth quarter last year. Then this year, boom, we figured it out. We're rocking and rolling. Akin's doing a great job with traffic. Um, Josh is doing an incredible job with like influencers and affiliates and we've been doing a great job. The whole team has been killing it, but it's very demoralizing for the past like three months, ever since we made the decision, okay, we're chilling on the discounting. Um, it's demoralizing a bit when every day, you, like, cause every single day, all right, Toby sends a group text message to me, a Ken, Rob, Kathleen, Kelly, and lets us know, hey, this is what happened yesterday. Are we positive for the day? Are we negative for the day? or yesterday, how many, you know, what our, what our traffic was, what our conversion rate was, how many actives we added, how many people we lost. So every single day, if you looked at my string of text messages, you would see the history of our subscriber growth um, for T. Shanley since like, for like, like, like literally, we've been doing this a long time. And so it's interesting, but it is a bit demoralizing when you're used to seeing, you know, sales like that. And me, I'm a sales machine. Like that is what I'm built for. That is what I love. I love selling things. And so one of the, the, the ways that I sell things and, and reasons why I'm effective at selling things is A, I'm a good salesperson. B, I'm passionate. C, I only talk about products that I believe in. But D, is usually there's some type of incentive or offer. And so because that was kind of like taken away from me um, to, to a degree, it's been harder, right? I haven't been adding the subscribers as 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 readily as I was before. Akin, you know, he's doing, you know, the paid traffic, right? We're throwing ads up and banner ads and remarketing. And what happens, right? A lot of times you have some offer that you're incentivizing people to click and come and try it. But that offer, that discount has been shrunk. And for the past few months, it's been, you know, drastically reduced. Now there is an upside to that, um, which I'm not gonna talk about or get into today, but there's definitely a, a punch in the gut every day that Akin and I see, and, and the whole team, honestly, because it, it affects everybody. Because as a company, we are, you know, we're a subscription business. And so how do you, how do you measure success, right? Success for us up until this point has really been like subscriber growth and having this, this massive amount of, of subscribers. But when that's not being productive or fruitful or you're not seeing that, 
in the manner that you used to and the manner that you expect, even though we knew this was going to happen, it's still hard, right? And it's hard emotionally for the entire team. But other positive things are happening as a result of it. So it's all in perspective. It's how you look at it. But it's been a struggle for us just getting our hands around this and trying to figure things out. We've made some incredible progress on the retention front. That's kind of chilled out and went down a little bit. And so things are moving in the right direction. I know this is a long way just to say things are good. Things could be better, but we're always striving. And, and the, tr the other truth of the matter is, for the first like three years, we were on just an insane trajectory, better than pretty much like most businesses out there. And so, you know, you're going to have these hurdles. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have to figure things out. But the successful businesses and the successful entrepreneurs are people that don't freak out, don't be like, okay, crap, this isn't working. Give me my discounts back because that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do, right? I'd be like, just give me my discounts and I'll get our sales. And a kid wants discounts too. Like we all want it because it's our little, you know, it's our incentive. It's, it's a tool that we use in order to convert people. And for, for us, the people that are in the sales real, uh, the sales, you know, role at T. Shanley, that's like what we live and die for, right? And so it's been, it's been, it's been an emotional adjustment. Let's just put it that way. Um, but that's all I want to talk about that. Um, if you guys have any business questions down in the comments, please start it with business question and then ask your question. We have a few this week that I'm going to get to. Some one I didn't really understand the question, so you're going to have to restate it. Um, but now I'd like to talk a little bit about the idea of perfection. You think that the first person to actually design this little sleeve for coffee to keep your hands from burning, do you think when he got it out there the first time, he's like, that's it, that's perfect. Do you think they've adjusted it since then? Of course, they put sticky stuff, they've changed the thickness. I have no idea. <laughs> if I may not, I have no idea what the history of that sleeve is, but I'm sure that I could find it if I Googled it. Anyway, all that to just basically say that that you gotta get it out there. So often I hear from people that are like, yo, I wanna start a YouTube channel, but I'm waiting, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm getting my content ideas right. I'm making sure that I have a great camera. I need, and the truth is you just need to get that first horrible video out there. Because as a YouTuber, you are going to, you're going to cringe, you are going to hate the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, a hundredth video that you create, it's constantly going to be evolving. It's constantly going to be better, getting better. And the same thing happens for business. You've got to get it out there. You've got to get it in people's hands because if you spend too much time trying to make sure that all of the I's are dotted, trying to go through all the scenarios of what could, what if, what should, you are going to drive yourself crazy and you're never going to start. In my opinion, it is better to do the best job you can, come up with a product that or a service that you think is amazing, try to think through the main issues because that's the other thing. You're going to have issues. Perfection never happens. Even though Tiege Hanley, right, is amazing in terms of quality. Even though Tiege Hanley is amazing in terms of, you know, the quantities that we have in the products or the packages that we have, if you use them as directed, it lasts right at 30 days. Now, if for those of you who have been around for a while, when we first launched our wash, I believe it was, it was a smaller bottle, but we got feedback. They were like, yo, this isn't right. This isn't right. We, we're running out of wash. And so what do we do? Of course. We're like, yo, we go back to the drawing board. Let's give people an extra half an ounce of wash. And that solved the problem. But if we would have like, done like super like 27 case studies and, and had meetings about meetings about meetings, because that's the other thing. As businesses grow, oftentimes you get bogged down in your inability to take action. You meet about a lot of things. And T. Shanley isn't there, but T. Shanley, I've seen it. And, and you know, the thing is, I'm here in Atlanta. Everybody else, other than Rob, is in headquarters in Chicago. And so it's interesting to once a quarter go and see, you know, the growth. It's interesting to watch things sort of from afar. But it's also been interesting to see how we, when we first started, right, it was like we could quick change things because A, we didn't have a ton of customers, so we could quickly like adjust that. We could, you know, we could change marketing strategies because we didn't have all these different like, you know, systems and people and, and algorithms. We could wing it a little bit better. But as we grow and as T. Hanley and as your business grows, winging it isn't such a great idea. A lot more of it comes down to data. but. One of the other things that comes with growth and success and all that is sometimes 
getting into the weeds in terms of meetings and meetings and meetings and time, right? Because time is the biggest, most valuable commodity that we all have. We all have the same amount of time in a day, 24 hours, right? 365. There's no like loophole to get more. And so how you use your time, both personally and professionally, is incredibly critical for you to figure out. One of the reasons why I am able to juggle as many things as I do is A, I've got great partners that help me do what I need them to do in the respective businesses. But the other thing is that I am on a crazy schedule, right? I am very, very regimented. I know exactly what I'm doing every day, Monday through Friday, at what specific time. And when something goes crazy or somebody throws me a curveball, I get a little freaked out. Like I'm freaked out this week, just to be, just to let you know. I have been concerned about this podcast that I'm going to be on um, this Friday. By the time you're watching this, I've already filmed it and hopefully it already went well. Um, but I've been a little bit stressed out because this podcast is going to be two hours long. It's uh, a gentleman by the name of Mark Bell. Um, he is he invented this thing for powerlifters called the slingshot, which is like like strap that goes over you know each of your arms and it, it just it, it's for power lifters and so I was contacted by them they have a podcast and he's like hey Aaron he didn't his team did said hey we'd like you to be on the Mark Bell, Bell uh, podcast and I think it's more at this point sort of business related and so I love talking about business if he was going to be like yo you want to talk about style and top 10 teen style I'd be like no thanks <laughs> I'm cool but because it's business because it's Mark Bell because it does have you know, it's, it's got a large following. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. But it throws, up my, it throws off my routine because, you know, now I'm like, okay, crap, what am I going to do? Like, I've got my meeting at, 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 at 11 o'clock on Friday with Tiege, and then I've got to have a hard stop at noon so I can get ready and be ready for this podcast. So I've already started stressing out about it. And then yesterday I got an invite to speak at this, like, this like business association in Buckhead um, from this guy, and it's like, man, I really want to do that, right? But the problem is finding the time. And anything that throws me personally out of whack in terms of my schedule screws me up and I stress about it and I have bad days. And I've had, I've had one hell of a week. I, I'm just, I guess, letting you know that um, I had a really bad week. Um, nothing like tragic happened or anything like that. And I'm sure that there are a zillion people out there that have had worse weeks for me or than me. But I just had a bad week. Like, it was just like every day I'm like, I had to deal with stuff I really didn't want to deal with. And, um, and it was hard. But um, anyway, it's okay. You know, you're going to have these days and hopefully tomorrow's better. But it seems like once I personally get into like a rut or a rhythm of like kind of crappy days and being stressed out and not being in my routine, it sort of just keeps going for me. And I need a weekend to chill, decompress, and go walk outside listening to, to slow jams. That's what I do to unwind on the weekends. Anyway, real quick before we get to these other questions, I just, once again, want to remind you guys, perfect is never going to happen. If you think for a second that you're going to nail out of the gate whatever you're planning on doing, whatever business you're starting, it ain't happening. So get it out of your head. Oftentimes, we just need to bite the bullet and jump. You've got to jump, gentlemen. You've worked, you've prepared, you've thought through all of the big pitfalls and things that you need to think about and work out, but you've just got to jump. But this doesn't mean to jump prematurely, all right? I don't want you thinking, I'm going to start a business. I'm quitting my job tomorrow. Remember, responsibility is critical. You got to make sure that you can afford to do this. You got to make sure that you have prepared. And like they say, prior planning does prevent poor performance, but at some point, we're going to add another P. Perfect ain't happening. I just got a text from Kelly. Aaron, we have an issue. I want to get your opinion on it. ASAP, are you free this afternoon? I said, yo, Kel, film in a vlog. I'll be free in a little bit. Gentlemen, now let's get to your incredible business questions. First business question comes from HB Fashion, and this is the one I need you to think through and ask it again this week, my friend. When it comes to building a business brand, except what are some methods and tools you su suggest to those who have a nine to five job with a fluid schedule. I'm not sure what that means, fluid. I thought fluid was flexible. Um, I, it probably is, I'm probably answering my own question. Thanks for the advice. Um, what type of tools, what type of, like, what do you, I'm not sure what you need. I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, but ask again and, and we'll get to it. The next
next business question comes from the Style Goat. Good to see you. I love that name. He says, you talk about how you didn't have a plan B with your fitness center. Would you recommend a plan B or just focus on one thing? Everybody is different. For me, I, I just, I don't believe in having an escape route, right? Now, I know that a lot of people will disagree with me. I know that it's not necessarily responsible thinking about that. But for me, in order for me to really commit myself, if I'm interested in something, I've got to focus. I've got to have laser tunnel, like focus on whatever I'm going after. And so, you know, but, but you might be different. I, you know what? I, no, don't have a plan B because if you don't have a plan, because if you, I've rethought this question. Great question. Here's my answer now. Plan B's offer excuses. They give you an out, right? They give you an escape route. When things get tough, you're gonna be like, mm, I'm gonna jump over here, right? No, gentlemen, no plan B. Now, if all the signs are like, yo, you gotta figure this out, like this isn't working, there comes a point in your entrepreneurial journey where you're gonna have to, you know, be honest with yourself, possibly close it up, and at this point, I want you then to start looking for your plan B. If this means you gotta work at Starbucks, if this means you gotta go wait tables or drive a beer cart, I say do it, all right? Figure it out. But until you have that experience of the failure, which we decided last week is super important and you need it, you're gonna learn a lot from that, that experience. And so having a plan B, having like, a, well, if this doesn't, I think it's, I think it's dangerous. Um, dangerous on the dance floor. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Next question. Next business question comes from James Humphreys. He's back, baby. What's up, James? Good to see you. Um, how do you build systems in business? How important do you think building systems in business is for success? So once again, systems is kind of like this abstract like concept. You need systems for a lot of things, but it really deter or depends on what system for what function. And so, yes, I think systems are important because if you don't have a system for how you keep track of you know, records, you don't have a system on how you quantify or qualify your costs, how you basically attribute sales to what, like you need systems in order to develop and, and garner, garner data, right? And data is one of those things that we at T. Shanley are realizing you know, kind of late in the game that it's like, that is like, that is like your like big like thing, you need it. Because if you have data, if you can make educated decisions, you're not just guessing, right? Because guessing, you know, you're gonna do the best job you can, but honestly, a lot of times guessing is wrong. Like we've guessed like all day long and we've screwed things up. But if you have the systems in place to develop, you know, data and, and to extract you know, information, you're gonna be much further ahead than everybody else. And so yes, I say, put systems in place. Hands down, 100%, you need systems. Unless you're a YouTuber, then no systems. I'm kidding. <laughs> did I tell you it's been one of those weeks or did I tell you it's been one of those weeks? So I was editing the vlog, I'm like, wait a second, there needs to be another clip. Where's the last clip where I tell everybody that I love them more than the, exactly. Apparently, I did not hit the button when I was filming the last clip. So guys, that is officially where we're gonna wrap things up. As always, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes and I cannot wait for fall. It's like 95 degrees here in Atlanta and quite frankly, I got, I got fall on the mind. Why you ask? Two words, boots and leather jackets. You rock. See you next week.